two things. Every month, I think about Baby Stormy saying B -b -b Birkin. Never ceases to amaze me. Secondly, if anybody knows how to take care of a tomato plant, please let me know. I don't know what's going on with it. I water it every day and uh, it's dying. Like I knew it wasn't good at plants, but I didn't think I was this bad. It's so funny because I really want to have a garden when I buy a house. You can't have a garden if you keep killing plants and you following the rules. Like I don't, anyways, let's get in the video. <laughs> My name is Isis and this is Isis Says Hi. I like to do a lot of, <coughs> sorry. I like to do a lot of research, research videos <laughs> about social issues or political things that interest me or that I have questions about. And sometimes I do really random rambles about politics and whatever else comes to my brain. So if you like any of those things that you're hearing, please subscribe and like the video. Well, halfway through you can like it if you like what you're hearing, but please subscribe right now. I also realized that I never did an update on part two of defunding the police. I wanted to give some updates on Camden and say that there aren't any updates. <laughs> From when I had done that research and to now even, there hasn't been a lot of like changes really that's gone on with Camden and that police accountability point. So quite honestly, the only word that we can base they're doing a good job on is the word of residents who don't fully agree and the Camden Police Department. And then for the USPS video that I made last week, they have paused taking away mailboxes. But what I've been interested in trying to figure out and learn about is where these changes happened. Another big part of it is that they paused. So I don't even know, and a lot of us don't really know if they're gonna restore, are they gonna put back the sorting machines in the places they took it away from? Are they gonna put back the mailboxes in the places they took it away from? I've been up for a while. I don't know, I just feel very weirdly tired and in a fugue state, but I promise I'm okay. So I wanted to talk about political conventions and why they exist. I've always been confused about what party conventions specifically do ever since I was like in high school. And I've always just wondered why there's this need for like a political posturing of sorts, especially if we knew pretty much the presidential candidates because people follow along in the presidential primaries of who's getting the most votes, you know? So I've just always been very confused. I think this election has just called into question so many political things of significance that exist. <laughs> to preface this, this is going to be focused primarily, ooh, oh my God, <laughs> primarily on American politics. I didn't know that other countries also do conventions until I was researching it. So what is a political convention? So political conventions are when delegates and a political party meet on a local, state, or national level to select candidates for office and to decide party policy. The overall formal purpose is to select the party's presidential nominee and to get party delegates excited for the upcoming election. So the convention also announces their party principles and goals, which is usually called a platform, and sets the rules for the party's electoral activities. Conventions introduced to eliminate the abuses of the caucus system and were expected through their open and public conduct of business to be more democratic and less vulnerable to control by party bosses and machines political machines I always think of that I don't know if I'll find it but the political cartoon with that like the huge dude and he's like representative of the political machine. Most of the real business of conventions are conducted in informal meetings with many delegates and leaders, and activity on the floor of the convention is usually a reflection of behind the scenes decisions. So some criticisms of the national conventions in the US specifically, there's the critique of it being a weird political spectacle, like a weird party posturing in a way. People who are defending it argue that it's a way for the demo, the party, excuse me, it's a way for a political party to to kind of announce their views and their beliefs and in that way help to hopefully make people more enthusiastic about their party and about voting. What is with the motorcycles today? 
These are real loud. Because elected officials must appeal to both party leaders and the public to function effectively, supporters of conventions claim they are also a good test of how well a candidate will perform in office, which I don't believe because the thing is like four days at best. No, that, that, response is dumb i understood the first response of this is a good way to talk about how the party is going to be working and how, what the party views in the beginning but to say well this is a good way to see how the presidential candidate will perform in office the convention is four days four to five days that's doesn't make sense at first the way presidential candidates were selected was divided among the states according to their electoral college vote with each state having two convention votes per elector. Now every US state and territory are given a number of voting representatives, known as delegates, and they are determined by how many people are in the state or territory, how many congressional reps or state officials are in the party, and the state's presidential voting pattern. You might as well have just gone with the electoral vote thing. I know politics is confusing and a weird whatever the heck it is, I just didn't think that that was how they chose delegates like that doesn't make any sense to me but you know like it makes sense but it also doesn't a nominee is chosen through the delegates who act as as kind of like the overall u.s voting representatives at the convention delegate attendees usually range in number from 2500 to 5000 most of the delegates elected in primaries are required to vote in a way that reflects the voters choice most of the delegates usually pledge themselves to a certain candidate in states with presidential primaries voters choose their delegates delegates insert ballot picture <laughs> I read something I wasn't supposed to read out loud in states with caucuses delegates are selected at the party state convention I don't even know if any states in the US have caucuses still I mean I guess like the New Hampshire caucus but that, I, I guess that's maybe what Okay, moving on. While delegates of the two main political parties in the United States usually pledge their vote to one candidate, there are also unpledged delegates. These are known as superdelegates. A candidate who has won enough delegate votes in the primaries can thus be certain of winning the nomination on the first ballot. So on the first ballot meaning that if they get enough votes while we're voting in the primaries, they should be the presumptive nominee. This reduces the power of party leaders and their ability to get delegate votes in exchange for political favors. If no single candidate emerges by the end of the primary season, however, a scenario called a brokered convention could result, which is where I think the superdelegate conversation usually is a big issue. Since the 1970s, the major party nominees for the presidency rarely have been in doubt, so convention voting is more performative and usually Usually requires only a single ballot or a roll call vote of the state's delegates. So to ensure a Republican nomination, a candidate needs to win 1,237 delegates. The Democratic nomination needs 2,383 delega delegates. I think every single time I've created a video, I have always, well at least here, I've had a cold of some sort, like some sort of stuffing up. In summary, conventions go like this. Platforms are announced. They're usually broad and sometimes very specific. So platforms, again, are kind of what the party's principles are, what they're gonna be focusing on. Lots of speeches. So usually during the daytime, it's people who aren't as notable in terms of party status. And then in the evening, it's usually reserved for people who are more known in the party. The nominee is usually introduced and that's done through a roll call of states publicly. And then the nominee gives an acceptance speech and that speech usually reiterates the plans they have once they've been voted into office office and then the platform as we said before contains a lot of the goals and plans that the party has some of these are public policy goals and public policy proposals and those are known as planks so that's it for me <laughs> my videos i feel like are getting shorter but i really want to make these videos as easy to understand and i feel like if i were to go over 15 minutes i'd lose you and i don't want to lose you i want you to learn about these things i think that's it's incredibly important to know these things so i've left a lot of my sources down below in the description i've attached the democratic and republicans parties platforms down below because they're the two major parties i cannot do all of the parties i'm just gonna do the two major ones i think that that's just easier to understand um so i've left the full pdf of it and articles summarizing it this election cycle has been rough so 
don't be so hard on yourself and hard on other people. Anyways, my camera's gonna die, so I'll see you guys later. Love you, bye. See you next week. <laughs>